Timothy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends of Jesus, our Savior, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now, when I say the word orchestra, you probably picture woodwinds and brass and strings. But one orchestra is made up of kids who play instruments made out of trash. It's called Recycled Orchestra of Keturah in Paraguay. Keturah is not, only, it's not actually a town. It's actually a slum built on a landfill. Every day, about 3 million pounds of waste is dumped into Keturah. Many families eke out their existence by scavenging through this trash from the landfill, landfill to resell it. And kids get pulled out of school to help. Can you imagine? To be honest, violinist, who is age 16, says there's nothing in Keturah. What's mostly there is drugs. Her violin, like many in the orchestra, is made out of cans, wooden spoons, and bent forks. One of the ensemble's cellos uses an oil drum. Another teenager plays a saxophone made out of drain pipe, melted copper coins, spoon, handles, cans, and bottle caps. Several years ago, a short video was made. The hope was to raise $175,000 to make a full-length documentary. Well, not only did they raise the money, but the video went viral. And since then, the recycled orchestra has performed all over the world. The group plays Mozart, Gregorian, Gregorian folk music, and Frank Sinatra. <laughs> God makes music with misfits. That's what Easter is all about. God loves to make music with misfits. I'm a misfit. You're a misfit. We're all misfits. We all fall short of God's glory. We always will, and we always will until Jesus comes again. But fellow misfits, it's time to make music. What do I mean? Well, the biblical orchestra is made up of the most unlikely mu musicians. Peter is a first chair, chair trumpeter. He denied Christ three times. Paul plays the violin. But then there was a time where he played a religious thug and persecuted Christians. And the guy who played the harp, who do you think it is? David. Womanizing, bloodthirsty, yet repentant David. Today on this Resurrection Day, we add another person to the misfits who make music. Her name is Mary. Mary Magdalene. Now, Mary begins as a mess Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out of. There are five Marys in the New Testament, which is why one of them is identified as Mary Magdalene. Magdalene isn't her first name. Magdalene refers to her hometown, the little fishing village on the northwest coast of the Sea of Galilee called Magdala. Luke tells us that Mary had been demon-possessed with seven demons, the biblical number for a complete set. Can you imagine being that messed up? Here's how it happens. Compulsion to prove. We begin a task or a job or a class with high hopes, with high endeavors. I'll show them I'll be the best. Intensity. We arrive early. We stay late. We give it all we've got. Subtle deprivations. We keep going. We begin to deprive ourselves. Maybe we stop exercising or stop getting enough sleep or stop reading our Bible or going to a church. We pick up bad eating habits. More donuts will do the trick. <laughs> Distorted thinking. We tell ourselves things will get better after I finish this project. I'll get back on track with my family after tax season or after this business trip. Heightened denial. People close to us begin to see what we can't see. We have left joy in a hobby, in a sport, or in life in general. We're often tired. We begin watching way too much TV. Disengagement. Life becomes a checklist of things to do, one thing after another. We live for vacation, and then vacation cannot last long enough. 
observable behavior changes. People who don't know us see that something is wrong. Our survival strategies become unhealthy. Too much internet, too much eating, too much sleeping, too much shopping, too much caffeine. Depersonalization. We become robotic. We just go through the motions. We play the part, we put on a face, but we have nothing left in the tank. We hit rock bottom. We internalize everything. We talk to no one, and we feel as though we've got at least seven demons. You see, we can all get in a mess like Mary. We can all get down and depressed and hit rock bottom. Did you know that 20% of people in disability are on it because of severe depression? Did you know despite being the richest nation on earth, the United States is, according to the World Health Organization, also the most depressed nation on earth? Did you know that in the last decade, depression among American teenagers has increased 200%, probably even more since COVID? For many years, the Chevy Noah was a successful American car. I don't know if everyone agrees with that. But Nova didn't sell well in Mexico. For a long time, there was an urban myth that it was because the Spanish word Nova means no go. And this myth is used as an example of marketing folly. It sums up that the whole thing was not very good in at least Spanish. Nova, no go. We hit rock bottom. There's no way up. And music, music, we have no song to sing. Mary was down, but her Messiah lifted her up. Jesus lifted up Mary from her pit of even seven demons. And that's why Mary Magdalene follows Jesus all the way to the cross to watch her Savior bleed and die. Mary's Messiah is your Messiah too. His face is caked with spit and blood. His throat is so dry he can't swallow. His voice is so hoarse he, can't, he can scarcely speak. To find the last time moisture was on his lips, we need to rewind the clock back 12 hours to the meal in the upper room. Since drinking from the Passover cup, Jesus has been betrayed, condemned, mocked, beaten, and crucified. No liquid has quenched his thirst. The Savior has no song to sing. And that's how things stand before the dawn on Sunday. There had been so much hope, so much promise, but now it all came to what? Nothing. Nothing. The most famous rabbi dead. His disciples in hiding. His other followers scattered. And Judas Iscariot has even killed himself. But Mary Magdalene gets up early on Sunday to anoint Christ's dead body. But the body isn't in the tomb. Mary breaks out crying. She tells her story first to Peter and John and then to the angels. And now for the third time to a man who is the gardener. She thinks is the gardener. Since you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away with I will take him away. Mary. The voice is unmistakable. Mary. No one has ever said her name with such tenderness. Mary. She looks up in sudden recognition, cries out, Rabboni. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He's not dead. He is risen from the grave. He is alive. Christ is alive. You can just imagine the emotions flooding from Mary's heart. Can you imagine as she transforms from the depths of grief and sorrow to the heights of ecstasy and joy? Just when it appeared as if it was all over, the shock and the surprise of everyone, the Father has raised Jesus from the dead. And Mary's song Better yet, her sympathy, symphony of celebration commences with joy. Mary's music is a five-word song. I have seen the Lord. Lord isn't just a polite way of talking about Jesus like saying sir or mister. With Lord, Mary is saying, I have seen God, the king of the universe. I have seen God, the one who has created all things. I have seen the one who is coming and will be riding on the clouds of king of kings and lord of lords. And that's why Thomas's parallel confession in John chapter 28 is the same. My Lord and my God. 
So what does all this mean? It means that there's more to life than what we think. It means that there's more to our story than what we can see. It means that there's more than death and taxes. Christ's resurrection means that just like Mary Magdalene, we have a song to sing. Remember, God loves to make music with misfits. And it's time, high time, for all of us misfits to continue to make some music. I'll take the tuba. I actually played that in high school. didn't like it very well, but I did. Maybe you take the trombone. Someone else take the tambourine. And you, what instrument will you play? One thing is for sure, we all have a song to sing. And we sing it with our own lips and with our own lives. And what's the song called? Our song has six words. What are they? I know that my Redeemer lives. To God be the glory. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.